good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. First article of interest for today, the central bank signs a banking arrangement document with the World Bank. As part of its strategy to develop its foreign reserve management in line with current and future developments, the Central Bank of Iraq signed a banking arrangement document with the World Bank's Reserve Management and Consulting Program, RAMP, Reserves Advisory and Management Program. This document aims to enable the Central Bank of Iraq to obtain technical support by exchanging knowledge and experience in the field of investment portfolio management based on a performance indicator that helps to maximize financial resources, building human capital through exchanging knowledge and developing expertise in the financial field in accordance with best practices in the field of reserve management. It is noteworthy that this program was developed by the World Bank in 2000 with the aim of building capacities and providing consulting and asset management services, and is considered a meeting place for a network of specialists, and it serves more than 70 members around the world, most of them are from central banks, managing nearly 2. 1 trillion dollars of sovereign assets. Next article of interest. The cabinet decides to reduce and rationalize the administrative structures of the country. During its second regular session, headed by Prime Minister Mustafa Kazem yesterday, the Council of Ministers decided to reduce and rationalize the administrative structures of the state, and while it formed the emergency cell for financial reform and managing the financial situation in the light of the current crisis, directed the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs in coordination with the Ministry of Planning and Finance to study the expansion of the base covered by law social protection. A statement of the Prime Minister's office received by al Saba stated that al Qazemi opened the session with a speech in which he emphasized that this government is the government of difficult challenges, the most important of which is the economic challenge, the fight against poverty and unemployment among young people, and the fair distribution of wealth, and work to develop state institutions, not political action. The Prime Minister reiterated his protection of the right to demonstrate an intolerance of any aggression against the demonstrators, and that the government aims to achieve their legitimate aspirations, noting by saying, we will not be courted at the expense of the dignity of the citizen and the interests of the nation, and we will work to save what can be saved, confront crises and diversify state resources. On the work of the armed forces, al Qazemi stressed, According to the statement, that, the heroic army and security forces have endured a lot, and the prestige of the military and security institutions must be restored. The cabinet issued a number of decisions, including 1. Reducing and rationalizing the administrative structures of the state by providing each government agency with its vision in this area. 2. Take appropriate measures to legislate the laws required for the success of the e-government, and for ministries and government agencies to expedite their procedures to automate their work, especially in the area of customs and tax, and to provide monthly reports on rates submitted to the General Secretariat of the Council of Ministers. 3. Re-examine the draft laws related to fighting corruption, and to activate the measures to combat it and strengthen their efficacy and to emphasize strengthening the role of the institutions concerned with that from the Integrity Commission and the Federal Financial Supervision Bureau in coordination with the General Secretariat of the Council of Ministers. 4. Emphasizing the freedom to exchange information and the right to obtain it by expediting the legislation on the right to obtain information. 5. Assigning the Ministry of Planning in coordination with the concerned authorities to review instructions for implementing government contracts to ensure updating of the approved standards and the awarding of tenders, and also to update the approved standards in selecting investment projects. 6. Providing the Federal Service Council with the appropriate staffing for taking its role in exercising its duties. 7.
agreeing that the Reconstruction Fund for areas affected by terrorist operations implement mobile hospitals to quarantine and treat patients with HIV in the regions that are agreed with the Ministry of Health and the provinces through the grant provided by the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development through the German Development Bank of 15 million, 15 million euros. 8. Accelerate the legislation of the general budget law in line with the requirements of the financial situation, the low level of the oil price, and diversify the budget sources. 9. Urging the Ministry of Oil to expedite the completion of the draft oil and gas law. 10. The Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, in coordination with the Ministry of Planning and the Ministry of Finance, study to broaden the base of those covered by the social protection law by improving the inclusion mechanism through demographic targeting by adopting poverty and social research data, and the study is presented within a period of one month. 11. Forming an emergency cell for financial reform, forming a cell to manage the financial situation in light of the current financial crisis and putting the necessary solutions to achieve financial reform and improving the performance of financial institutions. The cell will be headed by the Prime Minister and he may authorize the Minister of Finance to manage the sessions in his absence and the membership of each of the Minister of Finance the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Planning, the Governor of the Central Bank, the Prime Minister's advisors whom His Excellency calls the Secretary General of the Council of Ministers, and a representative of the General Secretariat of the Council of Ministers. The cell carries out the following tasks. 1. Ensure the provision of financial liquidity. 2. Take decisions regarding financial reform by rationalizing expenditures, maximizing resources, and reforming financial institutions, including restructuring them. 3. Establishing financing plans for the reconstruction, development and investment projects, including financing resources and mechanisms outside of government spending. 4. Improving procedures and automating systems in financial institutions. Next article of interest. International Monetary lowers its forecasts for economic growth for the worse. The International Monetary Fund director, Kristalina Georgieva, suggested that the fund reduce its expectations for global economic growth again, as the crisis of corona kills economies more than expected. The data received from many countries are worse than our pessimistic expectations, and more adverse developments in some countries are likely, the IMF director said during an online conference on Tuesday. It is very likely that we will update our economic forecasts sometime in June, and at this point we expect to have more bad news in terms of our vision for 2020, she added. She noted that the members of the fund said everything is on the table regarding the future of special drawing rights allocations based on the economic situation in the world. Earlier, the International Monetary Fund warned that the global economy will witness the worst recession since the Great Depression, amid the mystery associated with the spread of the coronavirus in the world. The fund expected that the global economy will contract by 3% in 2020 which is much worse than in the 2008 to 2009 financial crisis. Next article of interest. The U.S. could deliver relief checks faster, with tech's help. With unemployment surging and businesses struggling under lockdown, millions of Americans are relying on the extra benefits payments issued under the $2.2 trillion coronavirus aid, relief and economic security, CARES, Act. Yet, Amid threats of utility shutoffs and housing and food insecurity, an alarming proportion are still waiting for their relief checks. Holdups in issuing paper checks, payments sent to the wrong or non existent bank accounts, omissions of the additional $500 per child, and similar mistakes are the result of technical and human flaws in the aid distribution process the Internal Revenue Service uses, primarily outdated software systems and inaccurate data. The U.S. desperately needs to learn from innovation elsewhere. The UN's World Food Program, for example, is urgently distributing vouchers and cash transfers to over 100,000 Syrian refugees in Jordan using the blockchain-based Building Blocks platform. The program also recently launched in Bangladesh, where there are an estimated 900,000 displaced Rohingya people.
Oxfam transfers digital money to thousands in need of relief in Syria, Greece, Kenya, Australia, and the cyclone-prone island of Anuatu via SMS, an Android phone app, or an NFC card, a kind of contactless payments card that also acts as proof of ID. These applications, in Oxfam's case the Sumpo Cash and Voucher Assistance Program, have proven capable of dispersing tens of thousands of dollars at a time to many beneficiaries within minutes at a near negligible cost. Successfully trialed and implemented by the humanitarian sector, efficient, secure, and resilient systems are overdue in America's federal and financial infrastructure. From refugee camps to IRS, while the numbers and challenges are on a different scale in America's current crisis, the U.S. can learn important lessons from solutions deployed in challenging humanitarian environments like refugee camps. Weaknesses in current U.S. benefits distribution systems render them ill-equipped to handle the scale, complexity, and time arrays now needed. The most obvious and fundamental benefit of innovative direct aid distribution solutions is the ability to send payments between parties within seconds. For digital cash solutions built on blockchains, there is also an immutable record of each transaction. Information, for example details of payment recipients, would be automatically verified and updated without being tied to specific bank accounts. This would avoid the type of problem faced by the IRS last month when 300,000 deposits were erroneously made to non-existent temporary bank accounts and other payments were not processed at all since individuals' bank account information had changed or could not be retrieved. Decentralized networks move money without ever touching a commercial bank, reducing settlement time from days to minutes or seconds. Importantly, Solutions like those deployed by Oxfam and the UN's World Food Program prove that individuals can easily and verifiably receive aid from their local government or an NGO with as little as a cell phone number, sometimes not even that is necessary. Recovering $50 billion For the U.S., the first step is for the Federal Reserve to introduce a digital dollar. Central banks and governments around the world have been accelerating requests for proposals on central bank-backed digital currencies, or CBDCs. The Bank of International Settlements recently noted that the pandemic may put calls for CBDCs into sharper focus, highlighting the value of having access to diverse means of payment, and the need for any means of payments to be resilient against a broad range of threats. CBDCs, such as a digital dollar, would serve the 70 million unbanked Americans who are currently waiting weeks for paper relief checks to arrive. U.S. post offices in remote locations could verify identity credentials, while connecting customers to low-cost financial services such as check cashing, bill payments, and savings accounts. In fact, this type of mechanism was advanced by the House of Representatives last year in a bipartisan amendment to increase financial inclusion. Disaster relief agencies have designed their voucher schemes with the unbanked and unconnected user in mind. Similar solutions for the U.S. benefits system would equally serve America's unbanked population, as well as reduce fees to commercial banks and avoid related losses from inefficient payments. By contrast, the financial infrastructure used globally to disseminate governmental payments a CH transfers is costly, slow, and reliant on banks. Some ACH payment providers charge a flat fee, ranging from around $0.20 cents to $1.50 per transaction. Others charge from around 0.5 to 1.5 percent. If these costs aren't waived, the U.S. government might have to spend between $48 million and $359 million of capital reserved for life-saving aid just on transaction fees based on 128.6 million families and 110.6 million single adults potentially eligible for disbursements. For the 25% of U.S. households that are unbanked or underbanked, the government would potentially need to pay an additional $3 per pay per check cent, totaling $165 million, increasing the total cost of relief check distribution to between $50 million and $500 million. To put it another way, if U.S. COVID-19 relief could have been sent out using blockchain-based digital dollars, 
the Treasury would be recovering 0.25 to 2.5 percent of the total relief package, or up to $50 billion, by saving on fees and transaction costs. Urgent need for digital cash. In times of crisis, innovations such as those deployed in disaster relief work take on new potency. The CARES Act originally highlighted the urgent need for digital cash and disseminating checks. While this was cut from the final legislation, several other proposals in Congress have recognized the urgency for new digital solutions to deliver economic relief. U.S. Representative Rashida Tlaib proposed the Automatic Boost to Communities Act, for example, which included mention of a Treasury-administered digital public currency wallet system. The Financial Services Committee Chair, Maxine Waters, proposed creation of digital dollar wallets in her proposed bill to deliver the economic payments. The emerging technology behind humanitarian aid applications offers tools for cost-effective, fast, and transparent disbursement of economic aid to the world's most vulnerable communities during the COVID-19 pandemic. Through smart collaboration between fintechs, governments, and nonprofits, more people could be getting the lifeline they need quickly enough to prevent unnecessary suffering and minimizing our collective economic toll. Like, subscribe, and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook, and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power, using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.